Hello and welcome back to our video. In this problem, we're asked that given f of x, capital F of x is equal to f of x g of x, um, show that the second derivative is equal to this equation. So first, let's find the first derivative. So let's do that up here. So the first derivative is equal to, since we have a product of two functions here, we can use the product rule. So we have the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. The second derivative, we are going to be doing the same thing, except we have two products that we have to deal with. So for this first product, we have the first times the derivative of the second, and the derivative of the derivative is the second derivative, plus the second times the derivative of the first, plus for this product, we have the first times the derivative of the second plus the second. The second here is f of f prime of x times the derivative of the first. In solving this, we have f times the second derivative. And I'll get rid of the x's, right? Because that's what we have here. So we have f times the second derivative. So f g double prime plus f prime g prime plus another f prime g prime, so that's two f prime g prime, combining like terms here, plus g f double prime. And this is in a different order, right? These two terms are switched, but this is equivalent to this. So in part b, it's asking us to find similar formulas for the third and fourth derivative. So this is just going to continue to get more complicated, but for the third derivative, we basically have three um, formula or three uh, products. So f triple prime is equal to, uh, I'm going to leave out the x's and just continue with the form that they've been giving us where it's just f double prime instead of f double prime of x. So for this product, we have the first times the derivative of the second. So we're up to triple prime now, plus two, the first times the derivative of the second, plus the second times the derivative of the first. And then, so this is for the second term. I actually forgot. So for this, for this first term, we have the first times the derivative of the second, but we don't have the second times the derivative of the first. And then for the middle term, I've done it properly. And then for this last term, we have the first times the derivative of the second. Again, we're getting up to triple derivatives right now plus the second f double prime times the derivative of the first. So this is equal to f g triple prime plus two f prime g double prime plus another f prime g double prime. So this is two plus one is three f prime g double prime. So this term is accounted for, this term is accounted for, this term is accounted for, plus two g prime f double prime, plus another f prime g double prime. So this is another plus three f double prime g prime. And I'm putting the f's before the g's, regardless of where I have them here, just because it's gonna be easier to see the pattern for when we're guessing for c. And then our, so this term, this term, this term, this term, this term are all accounted for. And lastly, we have plus, f triple prime g. So continuing, we have to find the fourth, even though you might see the pattern, which is equal to, for this first term, the first times the derivative of the second plus the second g triple prime times the derivative of the first plus three. And then for this, we have the first f prime times the derivative of the second g triple prime plus the second g double prime times the derivative of the first plus three the first times the derivative of the second so g double prime plus the second times the derivative of the first so f triple prime then plus for this last term the first times the derivative of the second 
plus the second, or sorry, this is the, yeah, the first integer of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So it's starting to get complicated here, but we're almost there. We have, so we have f times the fourth derivative of g plus the, we have the derivative of f times the third derivative of g plus three of the derivative of f times the third derivative of g. So these are like terms and we have one of them plus three of them. So this is plus four f times the third derivative of g plus, and again, we're gonna cross out terms so we know when we've counted them. We have here, I forgot a term there. We have three times the double, the three times the second derivative of both of them plus another three times the second derivative of both of them. So that's distributing here. We've already distributed that one. So we're distributing here, distributing here. So three of them plus another three of them is six f, second derivative of f, second derivative of g. So then these terms are accounted for. Then we have plus three. So this is the third derivative of f times g. We have three of them plus another one right here. So that's four. And then last but not least, we have the fourth derivative of f times g. So we have the first derivative, which didn't actually ask this as an answer, but we can just highlight it here. Then we have the second derivative, the third derivative, and the fourth derivative. Now, what is the pattern here? Well, if you notice, we are going in these terms from f to f prime to f double prime, right? We're going from f to f prime to f double prime to f triple prime. So for fn, we have, for these terms, we're gonna build them up. We have f plus, we're gonna to need to fill in the spaces so these spread out, f prime plus f double prime plus, I'm just gonna keep going, all the way up until you have f. So for the second derivative, it goes up to the second derivative of f. The third derivative, it goes up to the third derivative of f. The fourth, it goes up to the fourth. So in the nth, it's gonna go up to the nth derivative of f. I should make it clear this is not f of n. This is the nth derivative of f. So that's the f sorted out. Now the g's, the g's are going in the opposite direction. So for the second derivative of f, of big F, the g's are going from the second derivative to the first derivative to plain old g. In the third derivative, it's going from the third derivative of g to the second to the first to g. In the fourth, it's going from four to three to two to one to g. So for n, it's gonna start where these started. So four, it starts with four, three, it starts with three. So n, it's gonna start with n, so the nth derivative of g. Then it goes down by one, so it's gonna be g to the n minus one the n minus one derivative of g, I should say. Then it's gonna to go to the n minus two derivative of g. And it's gonna go all the way down to this plain old g. Now, what are the um, coefficients? So for this one, we have one and one. I'm gonna move this down a little bit. So for the first derivative, we have one and one. For the second derivative, we have one, two, one. For the third derivative, we have one, three, three, one. In the fourth derivative, we have one, four, six, four, one. And you'll notice I'm writing one like this because this is the, for the one, two, three, and fourth derivative. This is um, Pascal's triangle. And if you don't know how to put that into the, um, into a formula, right? How are we, we don't, we don't know what n is, so we don't know that it's gonna go one, four, six, four, one. It could go, we know that it's gonna start with one and it's gonna go with n, right? Since we have one, two, three, four. But then for these middle terms, like the next one would be one, five, 10, 10, five, one. We don't know what six or 10 is gonna be. So the way that we go about this is we have, thinking about this in terms of the choose function, right? We have n choose zero, n choose one, n choose two, all the way up to n choose n. 
and you don't have to understand what this means. You might have learned about it, um, but this is really the only way to represent the coefficients here. Um, and this is basically saying, if you have n um, items, how many ways are there to choose zero? Well, there's only one way to choose nothing, and that's by leaving, their no leaving nothing, right? So this is going to be one. If you have n items, how many ways are there to choose one? Well, there's n ways. You could pick the first one, the second one, the third one, all the way up to the nth one. And once you get into n choose two, it gets a little bit more complicated. We don't have to worry about that. And then n choose n, if you have n items and you want to choose n of them, well, there's only one way to choose everything, and that's by choosing everything. But this is going to be your formula for the nth derivative of f. As always, thank you for liking and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.